country. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the pledge, we'll get our meeting going. So we have these young people right on tape. Let's we'll stand for the pledge, please. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You're going to, going to get a little back and forth this evening. You're lucky. My lot of evenings, I wish I could. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Plattsburgh Town Board to order for November 15, 2010. Can get a roll call, please? Bernie Bassett? Here. Thomas Wood? Here. Dry Renadette? Here. Mark Manning? Here. Paul Lemoyne? Here. James Coffey? Here. Rick Collins? Resolution 010-363, approving the minutes of the previous meeting. Resolve this minute to November 5th, 2010, and November 8th, 2010 be approved, and the reading of the minutes be dispensed with. We have a motion. Uh, so we'll so move. We'll Mr. Ranavat, second Mr. Mannix. Do we have any discussion? It would be November, <coughs> November 4th, not November 5th. Okay, we'll correct that. November 4th and November 8th. Yes. Well, we're not done yet. It's two to the <laughs> Sounds right. I've uh, got nowhere to go but up. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad you're keeping this. Uh, <coughs> at least you've got me starting smiling. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, then we have uh, another. Uh, I don't know. I believe it's a mis a print on page four, um, resolution three fifty five. Um, says that the uh, surplus equipment. Uh, it's returnable to the town clerk's office by November 16th at 10 p.m. And it's said they're going to be open at 10 a.m. It's going to be the same day. So uh, I believe we have a slight typo there. Those should both uh, be a.m. I'm assuming. Are you getting uh, tomorrow, those tomorrow morning? Fix those tomorrow morning? Okay. Okay, so uh, that, that takes care of that one. Let's see. Then I had uh, another one on page 10. Possible. Possible. Uh, <coughs> possible. It was in wrong. I'm not sure. I, actually, it was two 371s, 361s. But as those are 361, page 10, uh, in the second whereas, it says um, uh, location known as Pike's Cantonment, the militia and U.S. regular last stand to delay a large British invasion force from the occupation of the town of Plattsburgh at Halsey's Corner, <coughs> preventing a full-scale attack on U.S. forts until British naval support arrived. I thought we were fighting the British. Being as it was 1814. Yeah, they were. So I think there's a slight mistake there. No, I think they were referring to it's a land battle. It's a land battle that was designed where the British would come in behind the U.S. Uh, fort installations, and then the British at the same time would come down Lake, Cham Lake Champlain. All right, I, I understand that, but the way it's written, it sounds as if we're waiting for the British to reinforce us. Now, <coughs> of course, you know, I'm not the historian, but uh, there's a possible uh, typo there. Yeah, I, I, I understand the context you're saying it in town. I, I, I think our uh, historian contributed that. I only can give him credit, so I'll, I'll, I'll check with him as far as validity of um, the uh, forces and the sides. Uh, I'm not a historian, but I have yeah. heard about the Battle of Bloodsburg. You got the sides right. <laughs> <laughs> it actually came out a lot better than the Giants game. <laughs> I'm not going to give you another uh, point. No points on that one. We'll, no, we'll take the other two points. I, I might have to take you to task on that. We'll okay, so uh, as far as that, that's all I have on the minutes. All right, thank you. Any other uh, corrections to the minutes? <coughs> have a roll call, please. Thomas Wood? Yes, that's Mark correct. Mark Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. This is the portion of our uh, evening where we invite uh, individuals who would like to address the town board to do so. Uh, we usually ask that they um, indicate their name and address for the record. And 
and I limit their comments. But I think this evening we have something else very special going on. And with that said, I would ask Erin if she would uh, come to the front and uh, lead the way for us. program coordinator for the town. We have currently, we have recently finished our fall soccer program and would like to recognize several participants for their outstanding commitment and sportsmanship throughout the season. Overall, our whole soccer season was a huge success, but we would like to acknowledge those players who have been positive role models for their fellow teammates and opponents. Our most dedicated player award goes to individuals who demonstrate these qualities as well as go beyond what we ask of them. The following players lead by example on and off the field, and that is why the Recreation Department feels these participants are highly deserving of the most dedicated award. We hope that this will help reinforce positive behavior from everyone else in the program. All these players' coaches have nothing but positive comments to say about them. We are very proud that these kids are part of our program. And when I call your name up, please come up and I'll give you your award and your trophy. From the Cumberland Head, Minnie Mike Stocker team, congratulations to Evelyn Walters. Thank you very much. 
much. Um, you know, it, it goes without saying, but how dare we ever go without saying it. Certainly, uh, we, we very much appreciate Erin uh, and her work in the program. These last couple of years, uh, the department has really made an effort to bring the youngsters in and, and their families to recognize that, which is what we should do. Uh, it's a great idea, and we appreciate that extra work. And certainly the coaches, you know, these, uh, these volunteers in so many ways that, that really make things happen in the town of Plaza, and parents. It's a lot of evenings running out. Uh, you've got children in more than one activity and, and sports and getting homework done. It's easier to just say no. And you've chosen not to. And the beauty is what you see here today. I mean, they're just uh, great youngsters. And what a wonderful time, Erin, uh, right after Clinton Community uh, went out there and brought back a national champion. <coughs> and, and this group of ladies at Clinton Community College are, are, are local students. Uh, I, I think they represented all but two schools in the Champlain Valley. Uh, so very proud of them and, and uh, learning to work together and learning to respect others, being a team player, begins right here at this age. And it's the things, you know, that you teach them and our coaches and parents do, the commitment. I'm sure you had some days that your youngsters just would have liked to stay home and play or do something. And you reminded them they had a game, they had a responsibility, they were part of a team. Those are huge lessons. And, and maybe one day uh, some of these young people will be part of a team that brings home a, a national championship again. We're, we're so very proud. And the other thing, uh, youngsters, we're, we're going to get you home early because you have school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But the college team, one of the things I heard mentioned uh, at the awards ceremony, even though they drove all the way to Maryland and played their, no, North Carolina, I believe it was. Maryland and played their game and rode the bus back and they were tired and they were excited and pumped up. They didn't have much rest. The very next morning, they were in class, every one of them. And none of them missed their work. Pretty outstanding to be not only a, a great athlete, but a great person as well. And, and, and we all know uh, a few special things make great adults. So. We thank you because we all live in this community. It's kind of nice to see some young people uh, giving and participating <coughs> like this, and we're right behind them. So give yourselves a nice hand also. Thank you. Uh, our last specific show, so let's get one more. Donovan Hack did come, so. All right. Now, the important part of, of facing the camera is this will be on hometown channels, or not hometown, but cable 17, uh, probably next, as soon as next Monday, right? Yep. They're not going to switch before? Nope, Monday. So, next Monday, I don't know the times anymore. Do you know, Rick? Uh, I'll be on at 7 o'clock at night. 7 o'clock at night? There's four times. It's on at 4 in the morning. Uh, there's a game. <laughs> yeah, in the morning, then at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, then at noon, eight or 7 o'clock at night, and then again at midnight. So you get a lot of chance to see it, share it, set your DVR, and uh, enjoy the awards. You're very welcome to stay. We'll probably be here until uh, just 12 or 1 o'clock tonight. <laughs> He's exaggerating. Leave <laughs> before that. But also, if anyone would like to leave, we'll make it comfortable for you to do so right now. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> <laughs> Very welcome. Keep up the good work. All right, Ryan. Nice. Is it fun?
to address the board this evening. I, I would like to make a comment if I could. Uh, basically, this is in response to a request that was, or a claim that was made at our last work session, so excuse me, I, I did write it down so I could get all the information here. On Monday, November 8th, the town board of the town of Blasburg went into executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining negotiations per Article 14 of Civil Service Law. This was announced to the public in attendance and the board adjourned. Following the executive session, a member of the public objected to the executive session, stating that the only negotiations allowed was collective bargaining or teamsters negotiations. Also referenced was the Taylor Law. I challenged that charge with propriety and indicated that I would seek a determination and further research the charge. I have requested an opinion from the Committee on Open Government and researched the Taylor Law. While I did not receive, I have not received an opinion from the Committee on Open Government to date, my research of the Taylor Law, in my opinion, supports the board's decision to conduct negotiations in executive session. In particular, the Taylor Law grants public employees the right to organize and to be represented by employee organizations of their own choice and requires public employees to negotiate and enter into agreements with public employee organizations regarding their employees' terms and conditions of employment. Further, the Taylor Law grants public employees the right to form, join, and participate in or to refrain from forming, joining, or participating in an employee organization of their choice, and to have an employee organization negotiate with their employer to determine their terms and conditions of employment and administer grievances arising under the collective bargaining agreement. Also, recognition or certification, an employee organization becomes the exclusive negotiating agent for a unit of public employees by recognition or certification. Taylor Law defines recognition as the granting by a public employer of an employee organization's request to be the exclusive negotiating agent for a unit of its employees. And certification is the granting by PERB of an employee organization's petition to be the, be the exclusive negotiating agent for a unit of public employees. It is important to point out that the town of Plattsburgh has had, in addition to its Teamsters Union Group, two other recognized negotiating units since before 1995. These groups have been known as the general office employees and the administrative employees. These two groups have been recognized negotiating units for several years and have and should expect as much confidentiality in their negotiations as their counterparts. <coughs> At no time has this or any previous board acted contrary to open meeting law. And in my opinion, any charges unless decided by a recognized court are utterly baseless. The town board has just recently recognized its newest group, hereafter known as the Justice Appointed Clerks Group. This group was recognized as part of a previous group, and as such, any negotiations conducted in executive session were allowed under open meeting law, and this board will continue to conduct any negotiations with our recognized bargaining units as prescribed by the law. Okay. Gerard, can I have a copy of that for the record? Sure. Thank you. Okay, resolution 010. 
364, resolve that abstract of audited claims, number 11B, 10, for, I don't have the final one with the amount. Do we hear? No. no. Uh, we did get that. Resolution 11B, 10, uh, and abstract 11B, uh, prepays, being received as reviewed by the Audit Committee and the Supervisor hereby authorized to make said abstracts. I went all the way through there. Did you have the one with the numbers in it? Uh, no. We, can get we got that later. The abstracts today. are in there. We can get the amounts. We'll add that in after. after. Do we have a motion? So moved. Mr. Lemoy, second. Second. Mr. Renadet, any discussion? So um, you're, you're going to change this and have the uh, amounts? We'll, we'll include the amounts in the abstract rate. Right yeah. We might want to, I'm just thinking, we might want to get those before we adjourn the meeting. Yeah, why don't you do that? Why don't we just pass on this one? And, uh, come back. They're right on the table here. Yep. Four. Right. I know. <laughs> Debbie's smiling someplace. <laughs> Not you, Debbie. <laughs> well, you might be. <laughs> Deborah Patton. To re register receipts right on tap. That's pretty good. The small back. Little one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, prepaid is $282,936.80. And the regular voucher is uh, $280,309.22. Thank you, Rick. Welcome. Uh, this is still on the table. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gary Renan? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Bernie Baptist? Yes. Resolution 365, Building Maintenance <coughs> and Safety Committee Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Mark Grove Building Maintenance Supervisor for the month of October 2010. A motion? So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Mannix, any discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gary Redditt? Yes. Mark Mannix? Yes. Paul Lemoy? Yes. Bernie Van? Yes. Resolution 366, Codes and Zoning Department Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Stephen Lionhouse, <coughs> Code Enforcement Officer for the month of October 2010. A motion. So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Lemoy, any discussion? Bernie, I just added that having gone to, to Mose the other night and spoken to the owners at their grand opening, that they were more than uh, had, had more than great praises for both the codes and zoning and water and wastewater departments. And uh, their exact comment was that um, it was a pleasure to do business in the town of Glassburg and compared it to doing business in Wilston, Vermont, and said that there was no comparison. And they were very glad to be in Plattsburgh. So uh, I commended both departments in person and thought it should be done here also. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gerard Redmond? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. <clears throat> Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Bernie Baptist? Yes. Resolution 367, Highway Superintendent's Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Fred Levine, Superintendent of Highways, for the month of October 2010. A motion? So moved. Mr. Renadan, second? Second. Mr. Mannix, any discussion? I think um, Mr. Levine shared with us today in the department head meeting that he was able to complete all of his uh, paving this year and actually got a couple other streets in. Um, prices held, weather held, and they were able to get a, he felt pretty good about that work. Roll call. 
Thomas Wood? Yes. Gerard Reddin? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoy? Yes. Bernie Matt? Yes. Resolution 368, Historian's Monthly Report. We can also receive and place on file a Historian's <coughs> Monthly Report for the month of October 2010. We have motions. So Mr. Wood, second. Mr. Lemoy, any discussion? Um, what's the sesquicentennial for April? 250. Is that 250? Yeah. Or 202. 1812 to 2000. Well, it's 2011 commemoration. I'm not that sure what that is. No, we're going to wait for 2012. I wasn't, I wasn't able, I didn't get the historian this morning to ask. Hmm. I have to check that out. It seems like the, that the historian and the assistant historian have been very busy and uh, continue to uh, get us involved in a lot of different organizations and also uh, seem to be looking for ways of uh, coming up with grants and things to help us uh, in this process, which will also help with our tourism, I think. Uh, significantly, I have a pretty lengthy meeting Friday that's focusing on developing uh, tourism in the area as uh, a destination. Uh, it's it's, a, it's really a good opportunity because the history is here. We just need to, um, you know, strengthen our presence. Um, and, and you started mentioning, Tom, it is uh, <coughs> worth noting our uh, deputy historian is really being focused on the uh, Civil War. Uh, and. <coughs> Our historian working on the 1812. So with the, the two of them engaged, we're, we're getting even more representation in that area. <coughs> we passed resolution, and I, I think it might have been uh, Paul who noted on the uh, grant to support for the uh, historian to get the signage done. The deadline date was the next day. I said they know it, and boy, the next day they uh, collaborated with Keith Herkelow, and that grant was out of here. And they're they're feeling pretty optimistic on that. And getting some signage is. Uh, a big part of uh, making people aware of uh, what we have in, in the, the community, in the region. But there's some, some very good uh, bipartisan, bi-municipal, interagency uh, activity right now with trying to improve our, our presence in the history books. So, yeah, I, I think that's uh, going to be a little gem for all of us, Tom, going down the road. Any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Greg Renardet? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. A resolution 369, Parks and Recreation Department, monthly report. The results to receive and place on file report from Melody Tobias, Recreation and Youth Director for the month of October 2010. A motion. So moved. Mr. Renardet, second. Second. Mr. Mannix, any discussion? I uh, note I participated on Friday um, as a six-hour uh, safe driving program that the town uh, has supported, benefits all of us uh, on our uh, insurance rates for the town of Plattsburgh. We had very, very good participation. Uh, I was a new presenter this year. Um, did a good job. Uh, we spoke uh, after his, his program and, you know, I indicated uh, that that was something the town board would support to uh, have him come back and do some <coughs> point reduction programs for the community using the town of Plattsburgh. And uh, I think we'll see that being offered soon. Uh, it's an insurance benefit as well as the point reduction. So kind of a win-win. Uh, we do it as a, as a wash uh, uh, so, you know, the charge doesn't do any more than just cover the cost of the, the program. So we'll look forward to that. He did, a, he did a nice job. <clears throat> Roll call. Uh, Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Renata. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Paul Lemoy. Yes. Bernie Bath. Yes. Resolution 370, Planning Department Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Phil Von Bargen, Planning and Engineering Department Head for the month of November 2010. A motion. So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Lemoy. Any discussion? Uh, Phil is back this week, by the way, on half days. He does have another doctor's appointment Wednesday, and uh, we'll see if they release him to come in uh, even more. But he looked good today. He's put a little weight back on. His color looked good, so I, I uh, think he's going to be okay. Uh, 
planning department has uh, been able to keep up. Um, Alan Reese uh, chipped in a bit in the beginning, and of course James was there to uh, take the helm, and projects continue to be worked on and uh, be moving forward. And, you know, your comments, Paul, earlier are, are, are really uh, very justified. It's either uh, planning or codes are going to get hammered if something isn't right, but uh, every now and then we get projects that really do percolate along, and uh, it's good to hear. Welcome. Thomas Wood. Yes. Drive Render. Yes. Mark Manning. Yes. Paul Lemoyne. Yes. Bernie Vasquez. Yes. Resolution 371, Supervisor's Monthly Financial Report. The job to receive and place on file a supervisor financial report for the month of October 2010. Motion. So moved. Mr. Renadat, second. Second. Mr. Lemoyne, any discussion? You're welcome. Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Renadat. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Paul Lemoyne. Yes. Bernie Baxter. Yes. Resolution 372, Town Clerk's Monthly Report. We also received a report from Rick Collins, town clerk, for the month of October 2010. A motion. So uh, Mr. Wood, second Mr. Lemoyne. Any discussion? Uh, Rick, you indicated, uh, <coughs> no, I guess it wasn't you, uh, Dave Duke and our dog control officer indicated we have uh, made some progress with our new local law. We got some templates and we'll, we'll be <coughs> moving that forward soon, I guess. Right. David and I came up with the, the fees and all of that stuff that we had with the town clerk's association. Mm -hmm. I passed it on to Jim has the law so to incorporate it into. Is that uh, one where we're going to need a public hearing, Jim? I would assume so. I assume yeah. like any other local law. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? Roll Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Rennes. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Paul Moy. Yes. Bernie Bath. Yes. Resolution 373, Water Wastewater Monthly Report. Resolved to receive and place on file a report from Paul Wright, Assistant Superintendent of the Water Wastewater Department for the month of October 2010. A motion. So moved. Mr. Lemoy, second. Second. Mr. Wood, any discussion? Uh, it's worth noting uh, Paul's been carrying some extra weight, but uh, you may have noticed I, I did uh, share uh, an email that we have uh, put the proclamation for the Cougars uh, soccer team on our homepage website. We've been using that homepage a bit of a, as a bit of a bulletin board, uh, which I think is nice. We also have posted the opening and uh, job description and civil service application online for the uh, water director's <coughs> position. Uh, we also advertised it uh, within the newspaper, and um, we'll see what happens. Um, I had some calls today. I didn't get a chance to respond. Uh, I picked those up as messages with Deborah being out, was trying to man two phones, and as well as a few other things. Is this something you need to go in a wider area, or just? We, we have, an, and you know, I, I really don't know, I had passed on to Deborah uh, a couple of uh, other uh, publications, American Water Works and so on, to uh, get the information out in. I'm going to assume she, she did. I, I can't speak to that. As you know, she was uh, away this weekend. She'll be back tomorrow, thank God, so I can get back on track a bit. And, um, you know, we'll find out. It is civil service. You do have to uh, be a resident of the county, or you know, you can certainly be uh, out of the county right now, but you'd have to move in at the point of uh, taking the position. Uh, but we will be receiving applications to, I think it's the 29th of November. Uh, we'll go through those, we'll sort them, we'll rank them. I'm sure there'll be people who would like the job and uh, don't have the qualifications, and those who have qualifications and experience will try and sort that out a bit. And then we'll call our personnel uh, committee together. Um, I think it's uh, one like we've done a bit in the past. Uh, I think we want to have uh, Marsha and Paul contribute some questions and participate. It's a, it's a significant position, uh, which uh, you know, we'll, I'm sure, find some good candidates. Uh, Mr. Dowling uh, has been working along, by the way, very well. He was having his first department head meeting today. It was good to see. I think he'll be a good Thanks. member of the team. Any other any other comments on the uh, water wastewater monthly report? 
Welcome. Thomas Cook? Yes. Craig Renovan? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Bernie Batchel? Yes. Resolution 374, request from Town Assessor Brian Gowling to attend the workshop. Perhaps, Town of Plattsburgh Assessor is required to maintain contributing education hours toward recertification credit. And whereas it is in the best interest of the town to maintain current and inform concern changes in these regulations. Therefore, it resolved that Brian Dowling, Town of Plastic Assessor, be allowed to attend the New York State Association, uh, Association of Manufactured Home Park Valuation held on November 19, 2010 in Albany at the Clarendon Hotel. <coughs> it is further resolved that, that $95 for the con conference registration and $158 for mileage be charged to the assessor's budget. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer and to be placed in the assessor's personnel file. I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Mannix, second? Second. Mr. Renadet, any discussion? Yes. Um, again, this, uh, we brought this up before. This shows personal vehicle being used and mileage be being charged to the town. I believe our travel policy is contrary to that. It mm -hmm. says that if a town vehicle is available, a town vehicle will be used and does not afford a person to use their own personal vehicle and charge mileage. So I would question the reason why we're yeah. doing it on this one. Um, good, good question. We discussed that at some length, and as you can see, I signed this. Um, for him to be uh, in attendance uh, at this workshop and in, uh, you know, at the Clarendon in Albany, uh, I think it begins at 8 o'clock, and you know, be there on time, ready to go. And historically, we would pay a sense someone down the night before, spend the night. Um, he's not requested that. He has family there. He hasn't requested anything uh, beyond the lunch that's provided for the workshop for the meals. Said uh, he'll go the night before. He'll stay with his parents that live down there. He'll wine and dine with them. He'll dine with them. And, uh, you know, there'd be no further charges. Uh, I felt uh, fiscally... Uh, that was a pretty good trade-off for the mileage, and that's why I, you know, gave it my approval. I just, again, I, I understand the reasoning behind it, mm -hmm. but I think that our policy is either going to have to be amended or we're going to have to have something to fall back on because this could, this could come back to bite us on a lot of other requests. We have a lot of other employees who would much rather take their own personal vehicle, saying that if it's if it's more than a two-hour drive, I, uh, I want to use my own vehicle or I'm going to charge for overnight. So. Uh, you know, again, if we're going to do this, I think what we have to do is revisit our travel policy in the very, very near future. I have no problem with that. And there might be times when it is to the towns that manage to have some wiggle room in that policy. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, the fiscal, the wear and tear in our vehicle. We're still putting some gas in it. And, uh, uh, and you're right. I, I don't know that that is completely black and white. It probably is. It probably says if one's available, you take it and right. you don't get paid because we did have those issues. And I have no problem with that. I'm going to make note of that. I believe, I believe it's that, uh, I may be wrong, but I, I believe the policy said that uh, states that, you know, if they wish to take the own car, then it just wouldn't be reimbursed. Right? Correct. Because we did have, I think, exactly as you're saying, you know, I just want to have my car and I want you to give me the mileage. Well, if you're, uh, for example, traveling quite placid, it's a little better deal for us to give you our car and put gas in it. So. But that's, I mean, that's the rationale, and uh, I, I think it's, uh, you know, a good decision for the town, but you're right, we uh, are making uh, an exemption to the uh, policy on this. So, so why doesn't he just take a car? He, well, if he's going to take a car, um, Has he been authorized to drive town vehicles? Uh, I mean, he has to go through testing. The background check and all that, I believe, is done. I have not seen testing. the report. It's usually about a 48-hour turnaround. He's, you know, been here more than that. So I'm, I'm making that assumption. Uh, what I did tell him is that he was not uh, to drive a vehicle until we did get that. So I don't know. That may be a prevailing issue here. <coughs> the The... I guess in this, if we don't change anything other than so just take a car, do we want to send the car down the day before? And I didn't ask the question, how far away are your parents where you're staying mm -hmm. from the site? I don't want a town car 
running around uh, too far off target either. I think Jerry's right. I think we have to revise the policy. Yeah. Yeah. I, and we make that because I think you're, what you said made sense. And Jerry's just saying sure. we got to include We, we need to be compliant. Exactly. And if the background check isn't done, then that kind of, you know, we aren't going to be able to do that. Well, considering the, uh, the time constraints and the fact that this is a very uh, valuable conference for him to go to, considering the job that we just, uh, we just received, <coughs> um, I'm in favor of him going and uh, not knowing whether he has the uh, Clarence to drive our vehicles. Uh, in this instance, if he takes his personal vehicle. I'll go along with it. But as I say, so in the previous in the meeting we had before, I think that uh, we need to revise the policy, as Jerry said, if, we, if we're going to be doing this. Because otherwise, we're going to just constantly get people coming in saying that, well, you know, paying for the car. I mean, it's quite a bit of money. Yeah, and the thing that made this one a little different is uh, the, the issue of the overnight and the meals. Uh, fiscally, it leans to our benefit versus just, you know, I want to take my car. And, you know, otherwise, we've done that many times. We said, no, you can't. You know, you can take a town car. Take yours if you want. I think with our previous assessor, we had this come up more than once, and I said, you know, I, I might rather drive a Lincoln also. <coughs> so, you know, take, take the Lincoln, but we're not paying you. And we didn't. Well, I, I can understand where we're coming out ahead on, on the money. I'm not going to say that, you know. Yeah, and I understand, uh, you know, if we want and We to, just have to revise the policy to, to show that. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, simply uh, putting in the policy that, uh, you know, request uh, will be considered uh, as an exemption where warranted. Uh, so you do have some legal room. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You can make a good call. Well, call I just, just anything that we're over. Just, just so that there's no, there's no doubt about it for the vote of the voting, I will be voting no based on I don't think that we have the right to allow this. So, um, I, I believe it makes good fiscal sense. Mm -hmm. It, uh, you know, it's, it's we're not paying in meals, we're not paying any kind of accommodation. Although, uh, you know, Mr. Lemoy and I talked prior, and, and there really is no basis for even allowing a, a room the night before. Uh, if somebody has to leave early, they have to leave early. We pay them overtime for their travel time. We don't pay for a hotel room for somebody because there's a two and a half hour travel time. Two hours worth of travel time, even at overtime rate, is cheaper than an overnight hotel room. But uh, again, there's fiscal sense in allowing this, but I don't think that our policy allows us to. So and I'm not going to And there's not, it's also the fact that we're not going to be paying overtime for this. So it's just a, yeah. I think like Gerard said, fiscally the request makes sense. Uh, we don't want to be in violation of our own policies is a bit of a contradiction. Uh, and we didn't have a lot of time to sort through this. Yes. It's, it's in our face, you know. So, uh, that, but that's why I signed it with the same, uh, you know, the same concern. But I think as a board we can uh, do exemptions. I mean, this is not a state law that we're breaking or anything else. It's a policy that we set and uh, we control. Policies are, are guidelines for decision making. Uh, like I said, nobody's going to be arrested or fined if we uh, have an exception. And I can see Councilor's doing his homework here to <laughs> make sure what I'm saying is, is accurate. I suspect the problem is. Any other discussion? Okay, let's see how it comes out. Welcome. Thomas Wood. Yes, six with the provision that we discuss the policy and the changes at the next meeting. All right, Renner, then. No. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoy? I'm going to vote yes on this because I'm not 100% sure he's cleared to drive a vehicle, and that'd be the only reason I'd approve it, is that he'd be, and I'd allow him to take his own car. Um, but otherwise, I would also be voting no on this, but I don't believe he's probably authorized. If he hasn't taken a drug test yet, he's probably not authorized. So. I had asked that that be done last week, but again, I can't. You know, I can't verify that tonight. Okay, where do you have to? Uh, yes, uh, because <coughs> I didn't get the information. I might assume that he hadn't. I probably would have heard. Who knows? I, I just don't know. 
Um, I will put that on the agenda for our work session to take a look at the policy and how we might amend it to uh, enable us an opportunity to have exceptions and you know feel comfortable about them. Resolution 375, home request number 19, as payment for DHCR disbursement number 23. Whereas all costs related to such project has been inspected and approved by the designated rehabilitation spe specialist for said work. We recommend that the funds be allocated from the housing trust per the approved quotation <coughs> for the completed work. Now therefore be resolved the town board town sponsor <coughs> does hereby grant the approved payment in the total amount of $7,400 as payment for DHCR disbursement request number 23 for work related to the project listed as part of the town factor New York State Home Program grant project 20083068. It is further resolved that the town supervisor be hereby authorized to make said payment for the project in accordance with the agreement. It is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer and to the bookkeeper. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Renadan. Second. Second. Mr. Wood. Any discussion? I think uh, Mr. Corral mentioned today in our department head meeting that uh, um, it appeared they were going to get 12 uh, homes uh, hmm. underneath this grant and they had applied 13. for 10. Was it yeah, 13? 13. <coughs> with the, yeah, the, the, proje the projection in their uh, application was to do 10 and they're mm -hmm. going to be able to do 13. So they've really been quite efficient with the funds and. Uh, Good use of funds, too. Yeah. Boy, it sure is. We're, we're going to have that discussion before long. Uh, we're going to try and find out as fast as we can if home grant money will be available. But I know the last two years I spoke with the director uh, personally after uh, this last uh, one, and the, the answer was very simple. You know, it was burning. There was not enough money. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the grant money was just not there because of the issues you know, with the state. Um, it's great stimulus activity. It puts people to work in a community. Uh, we've got uh, supplies being bought locally for these home improvement projects. It, the owner, homeowners uh, certainly are winners. Um, it, it's just such a great program. Uh, if the funds are there and we feel you know, there's going to be enough to go around, I can, you know, if all the same directors are there after January 1st, I will certainly make some calls and lobby them. Uh, this is just such a good program. I'm, I'm terribly disappointed we didn't get another one, but I do understand. But I, I hope we have support for that if funds are there. Um, yeah, just a footnote, we need to follow up with that roof issue too we talked about last week. I don't want to forget that. Uh, any other discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Greg Renadette? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Boy? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. Resolution 376, Environmental Compliance Resolution, Haley Lumber Grant. As part 617, State Environmental Quality Review, Section 8-013 of the Environmental Conservation Law provides for review of projects which constitute an action with respect to the effect on such projects on the environment. Whereas the determination of the effects of said project or action on the environment is necessary to determine whether a draft environmental impact statement is required. And whereas the effects of the project or the action on the <coughs> environment to be examined by all involved agency for unlisted action to make such a determination. Whereas the town board has before its project known as an action as an improvement to Haley Lumber grant and whereas the project has been reviewed and is hereby determined to be an unlisted action requiring the assessment as to the effect upon the environment. Whereas the town board is hereby determined to be involved in the involved agency and with no objection is made to any otherwise agency involved, the lead agency, in accordance with part 617 of the state of environmental quality review, for the purpose of assessing the effect of the project on the environment and determining whether the said effect sufficiently signifies the requirements for preparation of a draft environmental impact statement. Now therefore be resolved that the town board town of Plaster has as follows. One, 
the town board acting as the involved agency as part of the lead agency has received a completed short environmental assessment form, part one and two, a true copy of which here is attached, a map and relative materials giving information about the project and its potential effect on the environment. Two, the town board does hereby determine that after careful review and consideration of the environmental compliance file as prepared by Mr. Philip Von Bargen, engineering environmental certifying officer and licensed engineer, and after taking a hard look at the relevant facts of the project supported by the issuance of obligation to the town will not have a significant effect on the environment pursuant to the information present in part one, project information, and part two, project impacts and their magnitude. That is, therefore, the public, therefore, a further public hearing segmentation scoping the project for the environmental review and in preparation of an environmental <coughs> impact statement is not required. Three, the town board is hereby authorized and direct the supervisor of the town to prepare a notice of no significant environmental impact, negative declaration for this project. Four, a notice of no significant environmental impact, negative declaration, shall be designated to those involved agencies and the governmental units as required by the environmental con conservation law and any local law of the town and the environmental compliance file as after said, said to be maintained on file at the town hall town offices of the town board and made applicable for public inspection on regular business hours in the town. Five, the resolution shall become effective immediately upon the adoption by the town board and a copy of this be given to the bookkeeper. Good motion. Mr. Lemoy, second. <clears throat> I think a copy should also go to the director of the LDC. Uh, that's the book, <coughs> technically. Indirectly. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Same Excuse person. me. I understand. Uh, uh, and you seconded this, I think, Mr. Mannix as yes, well. Any sure. other discussion? Welcome. Uh, Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Renner. Yes. <coughs> Mark Mannix. Yes. Paul Lemoy. Yes. Bernie Bassett. That's right. Yep. Yes, resolution 377. That one doesn't count. Whereas a vacancy exists in a promotion of water and wastewater maintenance one in the water and wastewater department. And whereas David King has been employed in the water and wastewater department since November 2002. And whereas assistant water and wastewater superintendent Paul Wright has stated that Mr. King has routinely exhibited the characteristics of dependability, reliability, and dedication, and has pr been proven to be an asset of the department, and has recommended him for the existing vacancy maintenance one position. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board of town project is hereby authorized the appointment of Mr. David King to fill the vacant position of water wastewater maintenance one at an hourly rate as indicated by the current negotiated pay scale. It is further and on the same step as its current position. And it be further resolved that this appointment will become effective the first full pay period following civil service approval and that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign <coughs> unnecessary documents for permanent appointment of David King to the position of water wastewater maintenance one in the water wastewater department with a probationary period not to exceed six months. And it's further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer, Paul Wright, assistant water and wastewater superintendent, and to the Clinton County Department of Personnel, civil service for final approval and filing. A motion. So moved. Mr. Wood. Second. Second. Mr. Renaday, any discussion? Um, I, should this be uh, say, say uh, as soon as uh, where it says uh, let's see the time that it starts it says as soon as civil service <coughs> first full pay period following civil service approval should we say after January one? It'll be that by the time we get civil service. Yeah. 
But we, we've got some hoops to do still and um, to get this to still service and then to sync that with the first full pay period. We, we've been doing that with promotions to uh, save a lot of uh, adjustments in payroll for you know pay periods that seem to fall between uh, the promotional periods. And uh, you do an adjustment there, then you do another adjustment, and it's the first full one in the new pay scale. And, you know, we've, we've said enough already. Uh, and these are all pink sheets that go to civil service. And so by the time all the hoops are done and we get there, I'm confident it will be after January 1, okay. which uh, the step will matter will be on the new job rate. Uh, so it will all be much simpler. It matches well, that's program. why I asked because I, I, it's going to be different on the <laughs> contract, and I want to make sure it's on a new contract. Bernie, I guess I'll add I, I've been very vocal about this, both of these promotions uh, since they came out at the work session last week. I've done an awful lot of research. I've talked to uh, former water and sewer director Dave Comfort and Paul Wright and uh, the accounting department. Um, these two promotions are going to cost us. Uh, probably just short of $10,000 to give them a raise to, to where they're going to be raised up to. Um, I did find out that we've promoted nine people in the water and sewer department in the last three years. We've promoted basically everyone to a wastewater and sewer director uh, position <coughs> number two, which leaves us with absolutely no water and wastewater one mechanics. Um, I would tell you, a week ago I was opposed to promoting both of these people and certainly not based on uh, job performance or skills or anything to do with that because I think they're both highly skilled employees and, and would recommend them for any, any uh, promotion. I've since found out that there are probably a good possibility that someone's going to be uh, maybe shifting jobs where there are probably going to be a couple of additional openings um, in water and sewer and we're going to have no choice but to hire a couple of people after the first of the year. And because of that, I'm assuming we're going to hire laborers, and since this is probably going to take effect after the first of the year, um, I'm going to be voting in favor of both of these for that reason, because I think the, the logical choice would be after the first of the year to promote these two people up and then hire two new laborers, which I, I'm fully confident that the situation is going to present itself, that we're going to be needing to replace two people, and, and uh, these would be the people we'd replace them with and hire two new laborers. I am. I appreciate that, Paula. I'm still concerned uh, about the, the timing because it does say on the same step as current position, and we're not going to be doing that any longer. So it, 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 if it's after the first year, it really won't be on the same step. It, uh, it's, <coughs> the hourly rate is indicated by the negotiated, current pay, negotiated scale. pay scale. And after January 1, there won't even be a step system anymore. Well, so shouldn't that just be eliminated from the resolution and well, on the same step? I, I think, but I think technically, and, and maybe the answer to your question is yes, Tom, uh, but technically, as we begin the process, there is some possibility it could all be done in 2010. Uh, and if so, then it would require the implementation of the new, of the existing agreement, which does have a step system. I don't really think that's going to happen, to give you an honest answer. Uh, but as we begin the process, it's sort of a what if. Uh, so by having that in there, it just covers us uh, in the event it's within the 2010, and as, well, as well as if it's in the 2011. And, and as I said, I'm pretty well guaranteed it's going to be 11, so that's why, you know, yeah, maybe we didn't need to put it. But uh, to pass a resolution, resolution like this on November the 15th, um, we would really be very presumptuous that okay. this is well, happening. It does say indicated by the current negotiated pay scale, and that's been negotiated and I think signed at this point. So. Mm -hmm. But that one doesn't take place until after January 11th. Okay. So that language is. <coughs> It, it covers us in the event of both. Uh, Either way, that's right, and that's all. That's the only intent, and okay. to let it begin to go forward. But. And, and Bernie, I, I would just I'd caution the board on making unilateral promotions the way they've done in the last few years, because I also checked on how many people we've promoted from a heavy highway two employee to a heavy highway three employee in the highway department, and that would be one. And it's only because 
Fred Levine became highway superintendent and we moved everybody up the ladder. So we just, we don't unilaterally do this in any other department. And I would caution that, you know, again, without needing, having the need to fill the vacancy and promoting someone up, the, the, the promoting everyone to a wastewater too, while it's a very popular thing to do in each department, probably isn't the most uh, fiscal responsible thing to do. And, uh, you know, and, and again, we, because we don't do it in any other department, and I just think we're setting ourselves up for failure I, I would like to respond to that. Um, there's, there's been a whole situation over a number of years that where no one was put up to the positions they should have been in, and they weren't trained for those. When we got our new uh, water wastewater department head, he set about to set up people who could supervise others, and it took some training and it took some practice <coughs> and everything. And those people have to be promoted in order to get to those to get to those positions. They weren't before because all of the information was being held by an individual and therefore didn't want anybody else to move up to those positions. So we did, I'm not saying all of the nine promotions, but uh, at least a half of them were based on the fact that we needed to do that and that they were, uh, that they, they had been waiting a long time for, for these kind of things. So Jerry, I may be wrong, but go ahead. No, no, I, I take the same stance as you, Tom. For, for years, I've been on water and sewer committee for quite a number of years, even previous uh, with the previous board. And one of the arguments I always heard was that, wa that water and sewer employees were less paid than highway. Highway was a more desirable position to be in because they were paid better. Um, the question, the comment that I made was, well, you know, what are you doing to, to make yourself more valuable employees? And in the last few years, Water and Sewer has stepped up and they've answered that. There's been a lot of testing that's been taken. There's a lot of certification that that department gets. And I don't want to make this an us against them as far as water and sewer against highway. They're both very, very valuable commodities in this <coughs> town. We, we need them. But water and sewer has come a long way from where they were 16 years ago. They've got a lot of certification. And to make them take that, that get that kind of certification and take that testing and then not reward them for it is, is just not fair. Right now, I think if you take a look at it, and I'll, I'll stick my neck out here, I think that water and sewer and highway are comparably paid now, which wasn't the, wasn't the case 16 years ago. So, um, I, I, you know, I'm leery of the fact that we may have a department with too many chiefs and not enough Indians. That comment has, has been made to the, to the heads of the departments. But, again, they are the people who are there to tell us what they need. And unless we have some contrary information, we have to follow what we're being asked. So. Um, I all due respect to your comments. Your comments are well taken, Paul, and they've, they've been a, a valuable part of the, the decision-making process here. And that's why we went out and we asked Bernie to check and find out if these people are promoted, do we lose laborers? Do we have nobody who can go in the ditch anymore? <coughs> and the answer came back, no, we don't. We can still ask these people to go in the, get in the ditch. So we're not leaving ourselves without our basic workforce. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. The people have stepped up to the plate, they've gotten the certification, and we need to reward them now. And, and, and you're right, the, the comment was that they, we aren't without laborers, but now uh, they won't be working out of class if we say, you know, go down to the town hall and bring back a, a dump truck, because uh, they're able to do that with this new uh, promotion. I think the thing we want to watch out for is, um, it, it's a pretty good assumption, and that's where these men began their career with the town, and uh, certainly David has, has been uh, with the town a number of years. Um, they began as laborers, and there's, there's a lot of rationale to that's where you begin, and we learn about them, they learn about us, and we uh, define what their real skills are. Within the department, there are, there are a number of different jobs. There's a good assumption we would fill that way, um, but we want to be open-minded too. Uh, if we <coughs> lost uh, a key supervisor, an MEO2, we may need to replace that position because uh, maybe the next person isn't ready to step up into that, uh, that job description and, and maybe can do the work, but they're not a good supervisor. I, I, I recall hearing uh, David talk many times. He, he had some concerns over uh, promotions that he was making uh, because uh, some people would appear to be looked over, but the next step was one to be a supervisor. 
because you can do the job and you're, you're skilled and you're a hard worker doesn't mean you can supervise other men. Um, so again, I, I think, you know, we start with the assumption everybody begins at the beginning and you work your way up and you try to push your people that have been there and reward them. But we may run into a situation where uh, it's, it's just like the director of the program. Um, we don't really have anybody in-house who's ready to become the director of the program. We've got to pull someone in. And don't you think uh, a lot of people would like to wear the hat and get the salary, but they're not qualified. We can't push up. So we want to watch out for that as well. Any other discussion? Roll call. Tommy Flick? Yes. Mark Mendenet? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Very bad. Yes. Resolution 378. Promotion of Kevin Keene as water and wastewater maintenance one. Whereas the vacancy exists for the position of water, wastewater maintenance one in the water and wastewater department. And whereas Kevin Keene has been employed in the water and wastewater department since June 2009. And whereas <coughs> Assistant Water and Wastewater Superintendent Paul Wright has stated that Mr. Keene has routinely exhibited the characteristics of dependability, reliability, and dedication, and has proven to be an asset to the department, and has recommended him for the existing vacancy maintenance one position. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board, town of Plattsburgh, does hereby authorize the appointment of Mr. Kevin Keene to fill a vacancy position of the water wastewater maintenance one at an hourly rate as indicated by the current negotiated pay scale and on the same step as his current position. And it is further resolved that this appointment will become effective the first full pay period following civil service approval and the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign all necessary documents for the permanent appointment of Kevin Keene to the position of water wastewater maintenance one in the water and wastewater department with a probationary period not to exceed six months. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer, Paul Wright, assistant water and wastewater superintendent, and to the Clinton County Department of Personnel, civil service for finally for final approval and filing. A motion. So oh. Mr. Mannix, second. Second. Mr. <coughs> Rennett, any discussion? We probably did all the previous discussion well, to the great right extent. <laughs> you know, really, but this one is different because the, because Kevin has a very definite skill set. Um, honestly, and I mean, again, I talked to Dave and I talked to Paul Wright just the other day. Uh, they're both under the belief that eventually he's probably not going to stay here because he's going to go do something Within his, within his degree, you know, from Plattsburgh State. Um, in the meantime, he's probably more often than not working out of class here, and probably should be promoted um, because of that. So, uh, so this one, this one for me is, is much easier. Uh, and again, he is he's a he's a harder worker as the other one. And Paul said they're they're both quick to you know to come in when they're get, when they're called out in the middle of the night, and whatever. And they usually both volunteer, but uh, because of the skill set he brings and. The, the ability to you know to do computer work and the GIS mapping and what have you, this one is is much easier for me to support. We, we've really in the last few years done an awful lot to incorporate uh, the use of technology in that department and having, as you say, that skill set uh, that he possesses is uh, pretty valuable. Maybe you know who knows if he hangs in, maybe something uh, will come around that uh, will be more desirable for him with the town with that department and using his technology skills. Any other discussion? I think you'll be looking at additional requests for promotion for him yeah. going forward. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. He might be one that moves up into one of those other positions if, if they become vacant. A roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gerard Renardet? Yes. Mark Manning? Yes. Paul Lemoy? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. The good news for us, it's kind of a uh, buyer's market when it comes to employment right now. The job market is, is so difficult and so unstable. And <clears throat> even though our salaries, uh, we discussed that today at the department head meeting, even though our, our salaries aren't necessarily outstanding, uh, they're certainly fair, uh, the benefits are outstanding. And uh, job security is pretty outstanding right now. We haven't lost too many people here. Uh, I, we've lost, uh, I think, one corrections officer, right? one employee to corrections, I think, in that department. 
and stay along. But for the most part, they come, they stay. This can take Jerry's place. Are you talking recently or a couple uh, years ago? Three or four years ago. Yeah, I think that person went in and then came back, or asked to come back. <laughs> That could be. I wasn't going to. I just want to just stuff. plug for crash answers. It's not for everyone. <laughs> okay, resolution 379, contract agreement with the justice appointed court clerks. Whereas the justice appointed of court clerks maintains a confidential status, an annual appointment by the town justices that is unique to any other bargaining groups and employees of the town of Plaster. And whereas it is appropriate that the position of court clerk should have the similar terms and conditions okay. of employment as other town employees. It is not to be in the best interest of all parties for the justice court to participate that's in not, negotiation. Is this Rick, That's not the one. Is this? That was last week's. To I think you're going with the one to create the organize the uh, negotiating group. Right. Do you have a 379? This one is to uh, agree to their contract. That's what I have. All right, here. I'm in the way. Who's got it? Who's got I got it. it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. How much do I erase the point? Pardon? Do I erase the point? <laughs> I don't know. I think Tom beat you to the point. Yeah, I think you're back in there. Okay, we'll All start right. over again. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh, whereas Tom Flashberg and the justice appointed court clerk are desirous to enter into a contract agreement. And whereas a new agreement for said positions have been drawn up by the town's labor consultant and Mrs. Pam St. John and Mrs. Pamela Esposito, justice court clerks are desirous to enter into a said agreement. Now therefore be resolved that the tax agreement be executed by members of the town board and, and that the said final agreement be authorized and adopted in its entirety for the period from January 1, 2011 through December 31st, 2013. And it be further resolved that a copy of this resolution and executed agreement be given to the budget officer, to the town's labor consultant, Mrs. Esposito, Mrs. St. John, and to the town justices. I have a motion. So moved. Mr. Lemoy, second Mr. Wood. Any discussion? Um, I, I have copies of the agreement that, uh, as soon as you're, we're done uh, this evening, I'll leave out here if everyone would sign does, them, please. Does it have a specific uh, amount? Uh, because, uh, yes. as you know, the, it's not going to be the same as the clerk, uh, as the regular uh, clerical staff, because uh, theirs is going to be slightly different. Yes. So I want to make sure this uh, coincides with the uh, team. Yes. Okay. Uh, would you like me to read that section to you? Please. Uh, section 21, wages, effective January 1, 2011, employees shall receive a salary increase of 2.8% of their annualized base pay from the previous year, effective January 1, 2012. Uh, as a debtor in uh, 2013, the same, a salary increase of 2.8% of the annualized base pay. Was it 2.78? 2.8. Uh, there was, uh, it went, it was correct, it was, but it ended up 2.8. That's... Universal. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll take that next. I mean, <coughs> don't even go there. <laughs> For any the, the, the flex, the flex um, stuff logged up in there. Yes. Yeah, you don't have to. Okay. I'm saying yes, but I'm checking to be sure we discussed that. We went over that again today, and that was something they were very pleased to see. Okay. Roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gary Renadette? Yes. Mark Mann? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Bernie Mack? Yes. Let me call out the agreements to be sure we get those signed this evening. Resolution 380, the 2011-2000 through 2013 General Office Staff Agreement. Whereas the town of Flasher and its general office employees entered into an agreement regarding the terms and conditions of employment for the general office employees for 2007 2010, mm -hmm. and whereas said agreement will expire December 31st, 2010, and whereas parties to said agreement are desirous to enter into a new agreement, and the new agreement <coughs> has been agreed upon 
by the town of Plaster and the general office of employees as indicated by the agreement attached and dated effective <coughs> January 1, 2011 with an expiration date of 12-31-2013. Now therefore be resolved that the supervisor members of the town board and hereby authorized to execute said agreement with the general office employees and the town of Plaster on behalf of the town of Plaster. Motion. So moved. Mr. Mann, second. Second. Mr. Renovan, any discussion? <coughs> the, this is the same basic agreement as we got with minor exceptions to the salary? Yes. Uh, for the other? Uh, yes. Sections. Um, salary <coughs> was uh, agreed upon in a little different fashion with this one. It ends up being the same amount. Actually, it does not. It ends up being, I think, $50 short in its aggregate. As they uh, did the disbursements to keep within the 2.8, they ended up with uh, about $50 that didn't get in there, and we never further discussed it. You got a 21.57 reference here. $21.57. Uh, I think it was different than that. I thought it was 50 something when we got done. Oh, he's right. So, no, is that uh, just the. 57 might be. Was that yeah. just the two new shareholders um, <coughs> that agreed, or did the whole. Uh, the whole body has agreed. They've come to consensus. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm sure the uh, interest is already out there now in the first year of their agreement. They're going to distribute the funds in a manner such that um, employees who, in the current agreement that's expiring, would have still been in a step system that is being removed, uh, will get an increase of 3.46. Those who have been uh, off that step from the previous agreement will get a 2.21. In the second year, 2012, those who would have been on the step uh, from the previous agreement would get 2.84, those who had been off 2.59, and then in the third year of the agreement, everybody receives 2.8 across the board. Okay. I would like to make just a couple points just for clarification. This contract complies with the 2.8% uh, overall uh, limit that we had uh, agreed upon that. and also I think it's important for anyone uh, hearing that to <coughs> recognize that uh, there was a considerable amount of concern on the part of uh, employees that some of the younger employees were going to be impacted um, more by that arrangement and that they perhaps needed uh, more help and the group sat down and worked it out uh, not without pain and struggle but they worked it out and I think they're to be congratulated they, they came up with a solution that seemed to solve a problem that they they saw and yet it was a solution that was measured so that people could agree to it and I know Bernie had a very strong uh, hand in helping them uh, showing them how to go through a negotiating process uh, within their own group, you know, just with, as a group, so that they could get to that consensus. And uh, but I think I think it was it was well done, and I think it, it was it's achieved. And I, you know, at the end of the two-year period, as they head into the third-year period, they're all back on the same on the same uh, wavelength as far as the uh, the last year goes. And uh, so I think people were pleased with it. And uh, they worked it out. Uh, um, do you have the copy in front of you? Yes. Would you like to look um, at it? Where, oh. it says, where it says a date on the front. Which page, Tom? The uh, first page says term mm -hmm. number one. We have to fill that in. It says January 1st, 2010 on this one. Uh, that's when it's going to commence. Does it say 2011 on that one? It does. <coughs> yes. Okay. That's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. I was back up in the first paragraph. 
Right. I, I just, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I have an old copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of old copies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I checked three of them and they all said the same. I'm, I'm going to need a dumpster when, when this finally is over, believe me. We, we kept tweaking yeah. and as we kept getting closer, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if the public really <coughs> realizes how much we, we truly work collaboratively with our staff and the departments to, even through their own negotiation process. It was very open. Uh, there were a couple things the town board in light of the uh, economics uh, simply weren't negotiable and, and you know changing in uh, co-pays and benefits going forward not for the employees that have been here and working with certain expectations but going forward uh, that had to happen there had to be control but the step system that had a kind of built-in raise to it we've been uh, weaning ourselves off that and that was very difficult um, but we did work together and each time you know they were looking at the same final document and they'd read and we, we find sometimes just a, a typo or, or a phrase that just was more legalese. We've really gotten one of the biggest things this year. And I, I think future boards uh, uh, will, will really reap the benefit. We got away from the complex, convoluted, legal, sorry, Jim. What's that? I what's the matter with all that? <laughs> that language <laughs> yes. would require an attorney to interpret it every time you had a question. What's wrong with Wasn't that? that <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's, I thought that's, that's what purpose. the term attorney came from. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it could have by earlier documents, I think. So uh, as we did it together, so all parties <clears throat> can work to understand. It's, it's not perfect yet, but it's, it certainly is a much better document. But well, we did keep making little changes, and you know, I, I just didn't repeat them every time. And I just, I think we're fortunate that we don't have to do an environmental impact study uh, on uh, our negotiations because of the well, number of trees that uh, <laughs> suffered yes. as a result of. Uh, I mean, there is an impact <laughs> doing these four different agreements. Or there might have been. Let me tell you, it's, it's, uh, my office looks at it, as I said. Can't wait to have a shredding party. Any other discussion on the agreement? Um, that is here. I, I, I can't really explain why I'm going to go make another copy as soon as we're done. I seem to have one original with me. We need to find at least two. So we'll make sure to get those done this evening as well. Uh, with that said, roll call please. Thomas Wood? Yes. Ryan Redden? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Moy? Yes. Bernie Bassett? Yes. That's three out of four? We're almost there. Uh, resolution 381, as they say in Saratoga, a late entry. <laughs> Whereas the town board town placard has met at the time and place specified in the notice of public hearing to review the entire 2011 preliminary budget and to hear <coughs> all persons desirous to be heard. Thereon, now, there, therefore, it be resolved that the preliminary budget B and hereby it is adopted as a final budget for the town of Plaxford for the fiscal year beginning the first day, January 2011. And that the budget as adopted be entered in detail in the minutes of the proceeding of the town board. And it is further resolved that the supervisor of the town of Plaxford shall prepare and certify in duplicate copies said annual budget as adopted by the town board together with the assessment rules for benefit improvements adopted pursuant to section 116 and 202A subdivision two of the town law and deliver one copy thereon to the Clinton County Board of Legislators. A motion. So moved. Uh, Mr. Woods, second Mr. Lemoyne. Any discussion? You might want to add uh, after benefit improvement districts. <coughs> So, commended. Any other discussion? I just uh, want to uh, re reiterate, there's a couple of blind items that I had objected to. To go into any great detail would just be redundant. However, I'm going to, for the purpose of, of this discussion, let everybody know that I think that there was a good job done on this budget. Not only because I was a, a part of the, the three people who sat down and, and whittled through this with, with what can only be described as a, a small chainsaw, we did what we had to do, and to vote no would be would be so like 
Washington, D.C., or Albany politics, it would stink that I happens to vote no on an entire budget because you don't like a couple of items. I think that there's room for us to, to work on items that any one or all of us don't like, and we can do that going forward. But to vote no on this would just be, it would be asinine in my opinion. So I just wanted to go ahead and mention that although I'm not happy with the entire budget, as I'm sure Mr. Wood has got some objections to, to vote no on the entire budget would be, would be asked tonight. Any other discussion? Roll call. Thomas Wood. Yes. Gerard Remenda. Yes. Mark Manick. Yes. Paul Moy. Yes. Bernie Bassett. Yes. That, I think, will be the end of our business this evening. If we don't have any, anything else to bring have to the board. board. Are, are we just, the only thing we're lacking is, is the administrative report? The administrative group, right. And that's the only one. their uh, representatives, uh, as you know, uh, Phil uh, and Mel, and between their schedules, Phil's illness, uh, they just really ran amok a bit. Uh, they, too, have been very concerned about the step system, but they also understand, you know, the way things are going. So I, I think they'll probably be uh, resolving their needs soon as well. And if not, we'll continue as it was in 2010 and 2011. There'll be no change. Any other discussion? Uh, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn that. So, <coughs> Mr. Lennon, second. Mr. Lemoyne, for a roll call. Thomas Wood? Yes. Gerard Renner? Yes. Mark Manick? Yes. Paul Lemoyne? Yes. Bernie Lassen? Yes. We'll stay adjourned at 7.55. I'm going to go make copies. If you would begin to circulate the Justice Court with the one I paper clip, there are a total of five. Might as well sign them all. Just work them up and down, and I'll come back with the southern one. Uh, that one, uh, the justice.